G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. As you know, I'm shooting with the Rasa in the observatory now. I've reconfigured everything so I could shoot at f2. I'm shooting at 640 millimeter. It's wide field. It's really, really easy. It's so much easier than shooting with the C11 at 2800 millimeter focal length, which is really zoomed in. But before I took the Rasa into the observatory and took the C11 down and reconfigured everything, I got some data on M83, the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy. Now galaxies are hard at the best of times, but in this particular case, I must have got everything wrong. Looking back at the data now, I don't have the right calibration frames. I've got dust on the sensor. I don't have enough data. I misaligned the cameras. I made every mistake known to man. So I'm gonna show you all of these mistakes and I'm gonna try and process the absolute bejesus out of this photo so that I've got something to post to Instagram because let's be honest, Instagram is the only place I'm gonna be able to post this because it's too embarrassing to post it anywhere else just in case people zoom in and see how bad it really is. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Okay, so because this is a galaxy, I'm shooting with no filter. I've got the data in, I've stacked it, and then I go to stretch, and what do I see? <coughs> what the? This is some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, what is that? This freaked me out for ages. And I shot it again and again after a few nights, and this was always here. And it would happen at any time through the night and it was really bugging me. I thought it might be a light leak in the observatory. I thought maybe there's an LED somewhere and I taped everything up, but no, it's a star. There's a star over there and there's some sort of internal reflection happening on the plate or the optics somewhere. And that's just how it is. It's super ugly, but check this out. Look at these dust motes, absolutely horrible. And they're all over the place. And I didn't get flats before I finished up with the C11 or with this particular camera orientation anyway so I'm I'm screwed right uh, let's take a look at the color data again what the hell man now the color data looks all right I do have some differentiation there between the orange and the blue stars I've got some detail in the core but that doesn't matter so much because I'm going to be using the mono layer as my detail layer as my luminance layer but still this same light spike coming from this star in the same position but it's over in this corner which means I've actually misaligned my camera so when I went to register the data that's my color layer that's got to sit over the luminance layer it's just looking absolutely disgusting so what am I gonna do? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to have to crop both sides, uh, which is exactly what I did. But before I do that, I need to deal with these dust motes. Now, some of these dust motes are pretty easy to deal with in Adobe Photoshop CC because it has this content aware tool. If you've got a dust moat here, which doesn't really have any star detail, and this is, this is a horrible thing to do. You shouldn't really do this. What I do is select it and invert it because I know it's a ring, so I'll invert it like that and invert the selection again and then use the content aware fill uh, that just sort of uses AI or whatever it does to detect what was in there and get rid of it it's actually given me an artificial star that wasn't there in the first place so I'm just gonna do the same thing on that shift f5 content aware fill and it's gone then that's okay for a lot of them but there's some here which are really problematic like this this one at the top here how am I gonna deal with that it has a star right through the middle of it right so what I would do in this case is give it the shape sort of cut around the stars that are there but there are some stars here that I can't avoid right so I'll just select the whole thing and I'll copy it Control c then I'll paste it so now I have a second layer here with those stars back in and I'll show you how that works in a sec because what I'm going to do here is then go brutal with my content aware fill and this is why you need to use flats because you don't want to be doing this stuff this hurts my heart okay shift f5 content aware fill and boom it's gone it's left me with some gray space but if I flick the star back on you can see there's some stuff there that wasn't there before and there's some stuff that's gone missing so I'm gonna get rid of these lying stars so it's more just gray space now and I'll put it back to where it was and what I'll do is I'll just mask these stars back in again I'll just select those stars that we know were there 
and on the layer I'm just going to hit the mask option and then those stars that were there in the first place remain but we've got rid of that ugly dust mote. Okay, once it's looking halfway decent, I'll crop off the edges. I'll add my color layer in. Uh, that color layer doesn't have a lot of saturation, so I'll add that a bunch more times, but I'm gonna add that with a layer mask here so that the color only applies to the stars and the intersection much better. I'm actually pleased I got some hydrogen through there because I'm not using any kind of hydrogen filter at all. That actually worked. Then I'll add some levels. That's looking closer to sort of normal, but I don't like how bloated these stars are. We need to do some star reduction and now, I'm gonna show you my favorite star reduction method. Okay, so I've gone back to Pix Insight. I've run the StarNet process on this. It's actually left a lot of the glows, which is okay, because there are some galaxies here I don't really want to erase, but it has left some horrible, horrible artifacts throughout gray, square, boxy areas inside them, because it will do stuff like this if you don't have enough data or if the stars are too bloated, stuff can get really weird. You will have to clean that stuff up in Photoshop manually with a brush, with a smudge, tool with a dodge whatever you need to do now I'm back in Photoshop I've done a subtraction and that allows me to have a star layer the blending mode is set to color dodge there is color information in these stars so I can pop those stars in and out as I need yeah the stars are much more subtle now but also once you pull them out that way it gives the glow of the star a lot more pop so now I've got a lot more differentiation between the blue and the red stars they just really stand out quite nicely and I love that the final step is to resize this to what you want and because uh, my data is so messy I'm gonna resize it all the way down to 2048 by 2048 so it goes from being a very massive image to just that big which is good enough for Instagram now at this point because I'm trying to hide my sins and my bad data I am gonna be very brutal with topaz denoise and after all of that jiggery pokery it's uh, it's not a bad image of m83 I kind of like it not going to win any awards but probably my best version of M83 to date anyway. It's my best worst photo. I hope you enjoyed this exegesis of my best worst photo to date. You know if I'd taken this a few years ago it would have been the best photo I've ever taken but now like all astronomers we get super super picky and critical about our work and we are our own worst enemies. If I show this to my grandma I'm sure she'll love it. I don't know what I did to offend God, but my name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die!